So here we have a uh, GoPro. This is the uh, Session 5, um, Hero Session 5, and it's the one that I use on my helmet. Um, and currently I use it for obviously video and for audio for all my vlogging and it's getting quite good uh, audio such that people have commented and asked what do you use for your for your audio um, as you can see there's a little microphone here um, this this microphone's the one that's just part of the comms uh, but this one's the one and I can use fully use uh, all of all of the uh, all of the sound, um, voice commands and everything, and it's just a fantastic setup. So sit back, enjoy the video, and decide if you want to make one for yourself. GoPro, stop recording. So I've been asked by a number of people about my vlogging setup, so I thought I'd do a video on that and just show you and explain um, how I've got all my mics set up and everything. Um, and so I'm going to go through that. This is my Shuba E1 helmet, and as you can see, I've 3D printed a little uh, little GoPro mount there, which has got integrated in the GoPro mic adapter. So I'm going to go through that, and I'm going to show you how I made the mic and stuff. This mic adapter, what I've done, as you can see, the the um, the visor's fully shut. Now that was really important, but it's not mounted. It's not stuck at all to to the helmet. Um, I've got these little Velcro um, tie wraps that I've used and I'll show you those. So they, they just undo and it goes through the chin bar um, but it still fully seals, fully seals shut. It just presses down against that, against the rubber seal so I still still am able to uh, fully use it. I've got one of the cradles for the um, for the Session 5. I use the Session 5 because it's, it's uh, the only one of the sessions that has image stabilization built in so it's a bit more expensive um, I can unplug the mic adapter and there we go so this is the uh, 3d printed part so I've got the cage on the cage is just commercially bought cage that comes from GoPro um, for the session 5 so I'll just remove that and then here obviously as I mentioned there's a couple of straps which go around here like that and um, I've just put a bit of neoprene on there to stop it scratching the helmet. So what I've got is I've got, um, this is the microphone for my comms, this is the uh, inbuilt comms that comes, uh, well if you pay extra I guess, with the Shuba E1. Um, but this is the microphone that I'm using, as you can see it's got a little little wind muff thing on it, um, which is getting a bit knackered, I'll have to replace that at some point soon. And if I just gently pull this out of here, as you can see the wire goes off there, connects through this wiggly windy wire that I had and then that connects in. So here's another one of the um, cheap microphones you can see with the uh, with the uh, wind muff thing, well, I don't even know what you call that, on there. Um, and what I'm going to do, this is just the, the comms, it was a VT, BTS 10 or something. So I'm going to cut this off keeping it as long as possible. There we go and um, I'll be needing to strip those wires back so just strip off the outer sheathing and inside there there are only two lines that's all you've got in there you've got the red one and copper colored one which is the earth one okay and I'm going to solder that to a plug just um, you want RTS ring tip sleeve um, ring uh, tip ring sleeve sorry TRS tip ring sleeve you just want that you don't want tip ring ring sleeve which is the ones that have got um, uh, an extra ring on there you want just the three contacts um, so this is an old pair of headphones because I'm doing this for Chris Hill links up there in the description and he likes to go chest mounted so um, it needs to be long enough to reach from his chest up to up to uh, his helmet and this is what we've got so this one when I strip this one back it's gonna look a bit different instead of two it should have three in there there we go you can see that you've got a red a green and a copper color now, red and green mean left and right, um, and if you if you only do red to red and copper to copper, you'll end up with just, with it coming out just out of the left hand uh, speaker, and you don't want that. You want to have um, uh, you want to have it coming out of both. I'm actually going to use my magnifier so I can see what I'm doing. So what I'm doing is I'm separating the red, the green, 
I mean, red and green don't matter too much. As I say, they're left and right, but I'm going to solder those two together so that we get sound coming out both channels. But it's really important that none of the copper strands get mixed in with that, because if they do, you'll end up with a short and no sound at all. Um, now, the, what gives it the colour is like an insulating layer that's on, on the outside of it. You want to do this with a ventilated area because it's a bit stinky. I'm in a, in a garage with the garage door open, so that should be fine. Right, clean your iron, tin your iron. The objective here is to melt your way through the insulation on there. So the red and green going together, copper coloured one again is, is uh, going on its own. And once you've melted through that, you then need to do, just get rid of these blobs of solder. Um, we, we then need to do the microphone to just melt through. There we go, and melt through the other one. Good. So I've folded back the uh, the copper coloured one and I've got heat shrink just going over over that um, so the red one's sticking out and then on the other piece and I hope you're going to appreciate this Chris it should be good. Um, so you've got a tinned iron you've got both both the uh, sides are tinned you just hold the lock together for a few seconds hold it still for about five seconds all well, the rule is, I always say, is until, you, <laughs> until your finger starts burning. Although it didn't that time, that's fine. Unfortunately, if you've got a Hero 5 or later, you're going to need the mic adapter. But that just plugs into the mic adapter. This bit into your GoPro. If I've got it right, if it's all working, I can prove that it's all working by using the voice command. So I'll just um, wake the thing up. See if it works. GoPro start recording. So I've spoken into the microphone, it understood me and it started recording. And so this is the other great thing, um, you can use your GoPro on voice commands all the way through. Um, so I, I, in my helmet, I have to wake it up just by pressing the little button on the back, but then I've got about five seconds to tell it to start recording. And then I'll... <laughs> it thinks I said stop recording. GoCo, GoPro, start recording. <laughs> okay, so I have to wake it up with the little button on the back. Um, then you've got about f between three and five seconds after you pressed it, you've got to say that to tell it to commence recording. I'll not say start and that word next to it, or it'll get confused. Um, and then, then when you tell it to GoPro stop recording, it stops like that. And then you've got uh, about five minutes and um, before it times out and. Um, and you can't use it anymore. Now the last thing that you need to do once you've established that it all works is this is really important or otherwise it will break so you double it over like that or Z, Z shape like that um, double it over and then um, whack a couple of cable ties around it and it stops it pulling apart um, if you don't do that it, with the rough and tumble of using it out, out on the trail or whatever it will break so cable tie, zip tie there And that just stops it breaking. There we go, break, cut those bits off. So that is the complete thing. So I've shoved it in underneath the speaker like that so that it's right round the corner. And I like it not to be right in front of my mouth because it's unnecessary. The wiggly cable's great if you've got a flip front helmet and you've got your, uh, got your GoPro on the chin bar because then it can move up and down without getting in the way. And I like this to come out quite high. There we go, just shove that in a bit. So, and um, these straps, by the way, they just um, stitch through there. Go over the top, take the chin piece off. As I said, I put the bits of neoprene on the inside just to stop me scratching the helmet. I didn't want to put any glue on my helmet. That was the thing, I, I know that these days people do. But I was brought up back in the 70s when maybe helmets were made out of fiberglass or something dodgy like that and you were told never to put stickers or anything on them. Well that's what everyone said. I don't know if it was true or not. Right so that's on there. As you can see I can get my thumb under there to, to uh, adjust that. I can put the chin, chin piece back in. But I also will put this through there. Underneath there. It's up to you how you do yours if you want to make one of these, but this is uh, my preferred way of doing it. 
and that's as you can see is hanging out the top there ready to go onto there and make sure that the visor fully snugly goes down now it, it probably is never going to be quite as good a seal as um as not having it there but i've never had any problems you just have to push it a bit more firmly then it then it seems to go in position gopro mic adapter is here that's got the two holes in there for the um 3.3 and then you can also run external power supply into that one um, so that you don't have to because um, obviously that one's in the one in the GoPro I'll show you in a minute so put that in my little hole that I've made plug the three and a half mil into there so if I wanted if I had a I haven't got a USB-C lead on me right now but I can plug that down into my uh, into my bike get some power while I'm going By the way, you do want to make sure that you, you, everything still shuts fine. Um, yes, the GoPro in there, lock it in. And as you can see, round here, I can just plug that in. I can even do it the other way up, but it seemed like it was stretching it a bit too far. I didn't want to end up breaking my very expensive mic adapter. I don't know why they charge so much for that thing. I know it's got active electronics in it, um, but it's only an A to D converter, D to A converter or something. Um, a to D. That's the way. I can tip it forward just if I need to adjust my vent and I've handily, well I've in fact no I say handily, I did arrange it so that it tips back and when it touches that it's in about the right position for, for viewing the road. Um, but you, you might have to experiment with yours if you're going to do something like this. Right so that's it and hopefully I'm going to put, put the helmet on now and it should all work. Okay it's really important that um, you don't just turn it on by pressing the button on the top because for some reason uh, whatever GoPro call that feature it doesn't really work. Um, if I say GoPro start recording it starts recording which is excellent <laughs> um, and I can I can talk away on this and so you can see me on both cameras this camera that camera you can hear the audio on both um, and it will record away um, including the audio if I just press the button on the top although it will um, commence recording straight away um, it will it will um, <laughs> it will not record the audio which is really annoying so sometimes I do just press that if it's if it's gone to sleep because I've got to wake it up each time just ask me anything you want down in the comments below uh, if you want um, the 3d print file for this I can send you a copy of that um, if it's for another helmet um, I don't I think you can 3d scan um, your helmet with an app on your phone I don't know how good it is you can try that send me a 3d um, a, a 3d uh, scan of your helmet and I might be able to adapt the shape of it to fit a different helmet I don't know I guess most helmets don't have the big vent on the front so that was the issue that I was contending with there all right um we out so I made this for Chris I'm just running over to his mate's house to drop it off for him and I'm just doing a little comparison test of this microphone and my old microphone this is with visor shut and this is with visor open as I say at 40 miles an hour Okay, 40 mile an hour with the visor open. This is my original mic, so it should sound indistinguishable, but we'll see, do a comparison. Shot the visor now, still 40 miles an hour. They're both responding to my voice equally, and I'm hoping that both of them will be coming out of <laughs> left and right channel. We shall see. Uh, GoPro stop recording.